What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fazman, man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are back with NBA, which feels like we haven't done an NBA thing together probably in about as long nope. as ever. I mean, nope. for NBA season. So we're ready to get back after it. And, and you know, this is a time I want to remind everybody, and I'm absolutely breaking this this today. So forget what I'm – I'm being hypocritical. People should be – you should be bu- bu- bankrolling. You should be watching your bankroll. You should be budgeting. You should be very careful. There's going to be a lot of very much – very weirdness. I mean, we saw it last – Last week, even in a kind of couple of games, this, the, the Detroit says they're oh they actually had their guy their their beat writer say oh we're gonna we're gonna play all of our guys all, all of the young guys that, that, uh, for the rest of the year and then they took all of their young starters and played them five minutes and sat oh, really the game. yeah so there's gonna be some some craziness and of course DraftKings made it the last million dollar for first uh, tournament of the year for basketball and they didn't used to have any of these so I always get pumped up on these days but this is one it's going to be very very strange what's also weird is like if we get news early enough. You're actually going to see for a 12 game slate lineups that are a little bit like much more similar than you would usually see. Um, and you're going to get a lot of late news. So you're going to want to be by your computer and I will be by my computer till 1030. So I'll be trying to help out on discord. Want to remind everybody to check out Saber Sim. This is a great time to use Evan's tool that he created on the site. It's called around the industry. You can do a search and basically it takes you to see what everybody else is saying. Cause that's really important today. You want to sort of take the pulse of the whole industry because we're speculating a lot on what these teams are going to do. And I don't think they fully know what they're going to do in the cases of a Portland or an OKC. They don't really have anything to do. So why, so either young guys who are super talented that, that project well, like there's not really any motivation to let Poku go nuts if they really believe Poku is part of their future. And you can ask anybody, they'll have different opinions on this. So just a lot of stuff to look at, you know, on this slate. And uh, early on, it's not glaring with the overwhelming value that we sometimes see. I, dis- is- I, I, I disagree. Well, that. outside outside of outside of two spots, of course. I mean, or outside of one spot. And the only one that really, that, I mean, look, like you look, I'm looking at the top projected, even on, on in Saber Sim. Of all the guys who are projected at the top here, there's only one that I feel like is a guy who feels must play-ish, which is Trey Jones. And usually on these kind of end of years, we get a couple guys projected nine, 10 X, which probably will happen before lock, but just not yet. So, so explain why you disagree and tell me sort of your overall. Well, thoughts. that's what I was going to say. I mean, the, the Trey Jones looks like an incredible standout, but we were yeah. going to get there. Yeah. He's the um, obvious one. Or, or, or screw Evan and, it, and, it, and is around the industry tool. You could just show up at live at, at six o'clock and then we'll tell you, we'll tell you, we'll, we'll combine everything that the industry has said along with our stuff and just yeah. kind of tell you yeah. what's what. I, I don't usually t- so submit to, to saying, hey, you know, uh, go around. the." But I'm saying, like, you know, look at other Twitter. But if you want if you want to use the if, and if you want to try and figure out, like, you know, who else is talking about guys, do, do some searches in that tool. It's a, it's a great tool that we should probably talk about more often. Anyway, we've got a big slate to get to sheets. So why don't you give us your quick thoughts and then uh, share your screen and we'll jump into game by game. Well, let me let me share my screen. And um. I don't have any quick thoughts. I was hoping that we could just kind of figure this out. Yeah, um, we'll figure it out. That's cool. So I guess we could just start with um, first of all. Let me just let me just take a landscape of the slate for a second. So it's a big slate. There's no real island that goes all the way through till ten thirty. There's no break in between. Okay, it's why I, I always like to get look at what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so for me, Philadelphia and Indiana, I don't see any you know value per se but what you're getting is Embiid at 12k um as one of the um one of the spend ups to consider I, I have there's him uh Jokic and Giannis all around 12k and all around 20 percent owned I think as you'll you know, that's probably where they're going to end up and that's one of the decisions you're going to have to make when you're going to have a 4k Trey Jones um you're going to be able to get to maybe multiple multiple of these guys but you're going to start with the question of whether you want to play in bead and he certainly does look like a good play um hardened not quite as good of a play as far as i'm concerned um but he's going to be lower owned um so those are the two guys i would look at no real value and indiana i'm not getting anything am i missing something i don't know so that's what seems like kind of a it's either Embiid or Harden or nothing for me in this game. So the thing with Embiid, it's, you know, look, it's obviously he stands out as a great player. I think he probably has 60 plus fantasy points tonight. The question is, 
he's only had 70, I believe, once since Harden joined the team and none recently. This is as good a matchup. I mean, this these Indiana bigs, you just they just get crushed. You know what I mean? They just get crushed every 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 game out there. Um, whoever, whichever guys they do run out there. I think Embiid is a really good play, but the question is, do we do we can we rate him ahead of Jokic? Who you know, Embiid goes off and he puts up seventy five. Jokic goes off and he puts up ninety five. You know what I mean? It's just like a, it's just a tough. And and they're both playing in games they need to win. Like I mean, this is the game they should win, Philly, obviously. But you don't know how it plays out. I mean, they, this Indy team gave Denver a run last last week. Um, I think this is a spot where you you definitely have Embiid in the mix. I don't think I don't know if he makes one of my big 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 buy ins, but I'm definitely considering him. And and I don't think it's the worst thing. You know, Harden is, there's something actually like, this is a real thing. Maybe he comes back next year and it doesn't show up anymore, but this is not the same guy. It's just simple as that. He doesn't have any burst. He's one of the worst finishers at the rim in the NBA, which never used to be the case, but also he doesn't get as many foul calls. I just can't do it. I, I don't think I can do it tonight on DraftKings anyway. Um, if I was playing a hundred lineups, yeah, he'd probably end up in one or two, you know what I mean? Maybe even a couple more, depending on what exactly what value opens up. But I, I don't think so, man. I, and then on the indie side, I, I definitely think we should at least consider Terry Taylor. Um, high range of outcomes, but a 4,400 guy who can, you know, get you that 9X as he did a couple of games back against Denver in a sort of a similar type of situation. Um, you know, uh, you've got a couple wing heavy handling guys with a, with a the ball dominant center. And, uh, and you just think that Taylor is probably going to play some minutes tonight. Uh, if, if he gets back to that 35 minute role, he's starting again. It's hard to know how many he's going to play, but You'd think that they're they're sort of done with the season. The only thing that worries me is with enough bodies out there, like you know, they still have Batatse. They're high on Jalen Smith, um, Isaiah Jackson. Is they like to get in the mix? So I would probably need somebody else out to really make him a priority. But I do think Terry Taylor at the beginning of the day is a guy who strikes me as a potentially very good value that no one is going to play. Um, but again, it's a long shot, and there's going to be a lot of other good value in the slate by the time it. I'll tell play. you what. I'll, I'll grant you this: that he is that is he is my favorite of if you tell me you have to take someone from Indiana, yep. um, I, it would be Terry Taylor. Yep. Okay, cool. So, and then the other one, if, if you're going to make, you know, again, 150 only, but he yield. Um, all right, let's move on. It's on DraftKings. Uh, anyway, let's move over to Cleveland, Orlando in a game where, well, what is she, what are you doing here? Because I, I'm always stuck on big slates, what to do with guys like Markkinen in this kind of spot, like Mo Wagner in this kind of spot. Depend, and we still have all the questionables for Orlando. It just feels like a very hard one to analyze early in the day from the Orlando side and the Cleveland side is just, I mean, obviously you're playing Levert on FanDuel and I think you probably should be mixing him in on DraftKings, but I'm, I'm sort of stuck on this one. How, what do you think about this game? Well, the guy that's, that, that's the highest point per dollar play in this game is Moses Brown for me uh, at, at first look. Ooh. Um, they did move him up at, to 4,800. Um you know, I don't know if 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 he has the this the forty eight hundred ceiling. That's the problem. Um, he's got the three K ceiling, but I don't know if he's got the forty eight hundred ceiling. Even if he gets max minutes, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, so he's hit thirty. He's hit thirty four and thirty five. And I mean, yeah, I mean, but is that going to be good enough? I think um, seven. I think seven X though is reasonable at least. Okay. You know, I anyway, keep going. He's like a five. He's almost five K. You know what I mean? No, I got you. I got you. Yeah, so he's my, he's in the top right, but there there are others like you said, like um, like marketing looks reasonable at fifty five hundred. You get um, that was pretty much what I had. I didn't really, honestly, I really didn't look at um, at Fanduel for today. I mean, I will later just because, but because it's the the three K yeah. thing, I've really been trying to focus on the yeah on the drafting. So I didn't really look at it. Um, I guess Garland is marginally in play at 9,600, uh, I, I guess. But aside from that, those are the guys I, I didn't look at. Look, look, what's the Burks price on FanDuel just for the hell of it? 5,400. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Um, so I'd say Moses Brown, Laurie Marketing, both in play. And then Garland is a deep, deep tournament, tournament shot. And on Orlando, I don't know, nothing. That, that's where I am. Yeah, uh, basically similar pages. I actually think that, the, see, at least, so Garland I can get behind, though, as a large field play. Like, got him projected to play 38 minutes. The weird part is the minutes are not so secure here. So the only thing they're playing left for is to try and stay out of the eight spot, which really just means that they get home court advantage in the play-in game, which is not that big of a deal. But they're a game and a half ahead of Atlanta with three to go. 
getting one win would be nice for them, but will they go out there and, and put Garland out there for 40 minutes now? They haven't done the last couple of games. There have been some, some different game flows. That's partly why. Um, but uh, on DraftKings, the guy who stands out the most to me is from a point for dollars is, is marketing. And I just don't feel good about doing that on a big slate like this. Um, I, I think if you're playing 150, even as bad as he's been, you throw Kevin Love into one or two. I, I can't find anything that's a real priority for me in this game. Except uh, the one thing I might do though is just if I if I find that my build looks pretty chalky and we have all this value and I can get a third star in, I think Garland does make sense as that type of play because I think getting sixty against this Orlando team is, I mean I'm not gonna say it's easy for him, but especially if if Suggs is out um, and if Anthony plays or something like that, they, they they just can't cover him and the ball's gonna be in his hand. He's gonna ha- have an incredible usage rate. So I, I'm sort of a fan of that only. And, and Orlando is going to be impossible to analyze without Wagner. You have Franz Wagner, Suggs, and Cole Anthony, all questionable. RJ Hampton, if those if those three guys are out, I think RJ Hampton become looks like all of a sudden he's going to be the 9X play or whatever. Potentially, potentially Markel Fultz. I, don't, I just don't see – like Markel Fultz will probably go nuts in, in 20 minutes. He put up 42 in 30 the last two games, hasn't played more than 21 minutes. I just don't think there's any reason for them to give a guy who they still believe in the future of his game – any real run here. So it's a little, I guess this is my long way of saying, I don't want to play this, but I, by the end of the day, I might be all over Orlando if all three of those guys are out. I, I got a little, I have a little narrative here. Okay, let's do it. Um, I don't know uh, if it's the first time they played. I will, I will, I will guess it is only because he didn't get a lot of run last year, but this is, this is Moses Brown, Cole Anthony reunion. They played at Archbishop Malloy their whole careers there. Oh, yeah. You know all this because you, 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 you had yeah. a coach against them. Yeah. And, and they were the man that, back at Archbishop Malloy together. And I, because Cole Anthony, I, I think, was he a rookie last year? Um, and let me guess, though, Sheets, when they were playing at Archbishop Malloy and you were coaching in the AAUs against them, I, knew, I, know, I know you knew the day would come where you would be playing for a million dollars and you'd be talking about playing them in a, in a right. project, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, 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 I because I, remember Moses Brown really didn't get any run last year at all. Um, so it's possible that this is the first time they're playing against each other. So if uh, if in fact Cole Anthony is good to go, um, and if in fact Moses Brown gets to start again, that that, that could be could be a fun uh, could be a fun matchup. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I totally I, I like it. I mean, I, I like the the weird idea. It's a good idea. Again, we'll see who plays for Orlando, yeah. but especially if Suggs is out, I think that makes even a little bit more yeah. sense. Yeah, kind of a fun little, little thing. And they're both in play anyway. I mean, yep. their prices was just, just hard to prioritize on this slate, but I'll tell you what, if they put up a hundred between them or something like that, if it sheets and you have them, you're, you're going to be completely alone on an Island because nobody else is playing. Those no one's doing that. I promise you. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Houston and Brooklyn and what should be an incredibly high scoring game that Brooklyn, we all think, you know, Brooklyn does beat the hell out of some teams, but, the truth is Brooklyn is not a very good basketball team. Uh, they have two, uh, you know, all-time great. Well, But they're a really good basketball team that nobody seems to want to play in the playoffs. No, that's not true. I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think it's okay. turned. I, I think that people are like, welcome it now. Like it, rather than getting a few healthy guys back for Cleveland and, or something like that instead, or Atlanta, I'd rather play them than, than play Atlanta. Atlanta just made the conference finals last year and actually has a team that knows what they're doing and finally put it together. I don't, I don't mind playing these guys, especially if I was like Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee would trounce this team in a playoff series. Um, anyway, that, I, I, it's very hard to find anything I want to play on Houston, except for that getting exposure to this game, even with these guys priced up, it's, it's definitely a little appealing. Um, Josh Christopher is probably my favorite uh, long shot play. I just think he's, you know, he could get you 10, he can get you 40, but I, I don't know if I can play anybody on Houston comfortably uh, i mean obviously garrison matthews will stand out from a point per dollar but do you want to play garrison matthews as a as your cheap one of your cheap plays on a 12 game slate i don't know if i want to do that um and for brooklyn it's hey if you want to play durant or hard or, or, or Kyrie, that is completely viable like they seem to be more interested in trying to get the guys to get there sometimes uh durant had his 56 against atlanta they lost they get like they, they left Kyrie up 39 points in the uh, fourth quarter so he can get a 60 a few games back or a little while back both these guys as tournament plays, especially on FanDuel, the only problem is Kyrie is not going to be a tournament play on FanDuel. He's going to be a chalk. He's 9K over there. And I think he's a good play. Uh, 10-6 on DraftKings, 11-6 for Durant. I'm not getting to any of it. But again, like I said about the, the, the Philly guys, I don't mind any of it. I'm just not getting there. Kyrie is playing 40 minutes a game. I just I thought I would I'd let you know that. And Houston can't stop anybody. 
Um, yep. Just, just throw that out there. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it though. <laughs> the, yeah. the guy that's showing up is actually a good value is, is Bruce Brown mm -hmm. um, at uh, 5,300. Not sexy or anything like that, but just to kind of throw it out there. And I just have this feeling that uh, if you play LeBron, excuse me, LeBron, if you play Durant, you're just supposed to play Giannis. Um, that, that, that seems to, I, I, that's, that's my. If you play Durant, you're supposed to play Giannis. Explain yeah. that one a little bit. I, well, I just have, I meant if you play Durant, I think that just Giannis is a better play at 200 more. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't okay. mean you have to play them together. I just mean that if you're going to think about playing him in 11-6, right. why not just play Giannis? Um, that, that would be my, uh, I think that Giannis is less blowout risk. I, 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 you know what I mean? Like, uh, and he just projects a little bit better. Um, it's going to be lower owned Durant, I presume. Yep. Um, so I guess there's an argument for that. And I would probably, if we're going to play Durant, try to find something on Houston. I guess I don't even know if he's playing, but I, I'm instinctively, I would say either Kevin Porter Jr. or Christian Wood. But it's Christian, oh, he's out, Christian Wood? Yeah, it's, it's Shen. I mean, to me, Shen Goon is the one guy on, on Houston I'm probably going to not you just play. Him. I mean, you could play him at 6,700, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just about the minutes. I mean, he could put up 50 or 60. He's the best player on that team. Um, mm -hmm. By a pretty good amount, by the way. And people, just, you know, people that might sound crazy. People talk to me in a year or two and see we see if we still. Who are we gonna play this slate so far? This is, yeah. uh, this is I know. Well, this is good though. This is what yeah. we want to do, right? You want to make yeah. the big slate small. I always get excited when we don't like guys, but I do think that Kevin Porter Jr. deserves more recognition. Like this guy's, his numbers. He's projected to score thirty nine fantasy points without Christian Wood. And I know that Shengun was out for a couple of those games too, but he's put up fifty two, seventy, and fifty nine, and. As much as we say about uh, Houston doesn't play defense, Brooklyn doesn't play defense either. <laughs> like, no, they play, they play less. <laughs> yeah, they, they, don't, they don't even need to. They just go out and outscore you 140 to whatever. It's a game you're going to want exposure to. It's just hard to find pieces. I think it's Shengun with one of Kyrie or KD for me. That's pretty much all I've got on my list. It's really hard to just overlook a, a, you know, a 242 total or whatever it is. A two, what is it? 244 and a half total. It's a pretty big total. Um, especially when one team's favored by like 20 points. Um, <laughs> what is the spread in that game? 18 and a half, 17 and a half. Yeah. Um, Charlotte and Miami. And just to give everybody a quick, you know, what does this mean to these teams? It means for Miami. So Miami right now is two games up and would essentially virtually lock up the one seed with a win. Um, they don't necessarily need to win this one though, because they've got, they got a couple games to play with and, Charlotte doesn't really, they could, they could catch the, there's a very outside chance that they can't really catch the Cavs. They're, they're two and a half back with three to go um, for the Cavs. Uh, they, they, they'd like to finish ahead of Brooklyn and keep their home court. And I think they could finish in eighth potentially, and then only have to win one play in game versus two. So I, I do think Charlotte's going to bring all they got into this game. Just, just before we go into it, but Sheets, why don't you tell us what you think from a perspective of a point per dollar? Uh, yeah. Point. So, so I have Jimmy Butler projected for like 32 fantasy points or something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Uh, no, 34 on a average and 3% owned. Um, um, listen, he's done nobody any favors this year. <laughs> as far as. We got him a couple times early in the year, but you're right. Most yeah, he's done nobody any favors this year, um, including, and what is this against, Bro I don't know what this was against Brooklyn. I guess they just got blown out. Um, 25 minutes. Yeah, they, they got blown out. They got they were down by like 40 in that game. Um Sacramento, he played 35 minutes. He did well enough, I guess. At Boston, we'll we'll excuse at Chicago 40. But I don't know. I mean, against Charlotte, I th I think you're supposed to do something. Um, if if you can really get, I mean, you can because he's done nothing. I mean. Butler's going to be 3% owned for a million dollars. Um, I don't know. I might try it. Um, however, Bam actually does look like a good play. Um, yeah. So he's going to be double digit owned. Um, so I do like that. And I don't like much anything else. I don't think I'm going to get to Lowry today, although it seems like a decent idea um, again against Charlotte. And then, unfortunately, when every park upgrade comes a park downgrade, and 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 Charlotte, uh, uh, park has, right? Charlotte is getting a park downgrade. 
Right. So, so they, um, I can't, I don't really like anything on that side of the ball. That's, that's my problem, but whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe this is the total like Butler troll game. I mean, where just everybody gives up and he puts up 70. I, I don't know, you know, in a, a high paced game. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but he's, he, he and Bam are both in play for me. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get to anything on Charlotte at the moment. Personally, uh, you do have a little Martin brother. Uh, well, no, actually, wait, you know, if a Martin just, just, no, yeah, yeah, you have the Martin brother reunion. You do. doesn't really mean much though. Um, we don't know who's, I mean, we have Kyle Lowry, Caleb Martin, PJ Tucker and Deadman all questionable. That's a lot of minutes. Um, I think that I, I like Bam. And I like, I like the idea of playing one of Bam or Butler. I prefer Bam in this matchup, but I, I think it's interesting what you're saying about, about Butler. And especially if Lowry's out, then his projection will obviously go up, but it's still, he's still not going to be especially popular and the offense will run through him. The one guy who's, who's maybe a little bit, maybe this is a little too far off the board for this kind of slate, but this is the kind of team I, I could see Tyler hero putting up a triple double. I could see him scoring 35 real life points. It's just the run and gun aspect of this, especially like Lowry's out. I'm definitely going to take some shots with hero. Um, but if everybody's playing, it's going to be harder to do. That's pretty much all I got for this game. And then we've got another, another game that actually has some, some implications here. You've got the, the, the Atlanta and uh, Atlanta and Toronto. And, you know, right now Toronto is, you know, they're, they're in the sixth spot. So they're kind of safe. They're two and a half up on the seven, but they still would like to win. They could move up to five. They're not going to get any higher than that. I don't think they have a ton to play for, except for keeping that, making sure that this team doesn't catch them in the, uh, in the six, which would really, they'd have to win out and they'd, they'd have to lose out. So there's still motivation, but it maybe you're not going to get 40 minutes out of guys here. Sheets, what do you think about the, uh, who's standing out here? Cause this is another game where I don't think you're going to see anybody stand out from a point per dollar perspective. Yeah. I'm not getting a really good projection on Trey today. Um, Terrible. Exactly Terrible right. matchup. Terrible. Uh, literally Toronto. I mean, I'm not going to say don't play Trey, but like Toronto just does not give up anything to point guards. Fred Van Vliet is an awesome defender and they play great help defense. Well, oh. that's good enough for me. Um, so I'm not really getting to too much to any tray today. And in the absence of that, I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know, Siakam? I, I, I don't know. I mean, let me see. Even from a point per dollar perspective, do I get anything from this game? No, we uh, don't have to play this game. So I, I, we don't have to play. Not really. Game. So this, this game is probably going to be a pass, except I'm just looking at, at what's his name, uh, Bogdanovich being questionable. If that's going to have any impact on anybody else on the team, if he doesn't play, um, yeah. But game is probably a pass for me. If you want to know the truth, yeah, I, I like Fred Van Vliet on Fanduel at seventy four hundred. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to I've gotten to as a guys I actually want to play. You could always make an argument for Capella. Um, I do think Herder maybe is a is a little more in play if you if you if you do take away that spot. But they they, they then will let let Lou Williams and and DeLon Wright, who Lou Williams was gone for part of the year. So like some of these other guys could end up getting minutes where you don't expect. I just think I'm going to pass on this one um, as of right now, unless we hear something going forward. But even if we hear like Ananobi's out, I still don't know if I'd be playing anybody from this game. So I'm probably just uh, on the passing side of this. Um, all right, let's talk about Milwaukee and Chicago. Go ahead, Sheets. Talk about the, the Giannis. Yeah, he's one of the top spends, you know, and, and beat or Jokic. And, you know, you can, you can afford him, so certainly worth 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 doing um on uh anybody else from milwaukee i think is i think kind of uh kind of speculative let me just take a look real quick i mean i, I didn't really see too much at first look no i don't really get to too much of uh aside from him and on chicago at, at what could be a loaded position uh which is pretty cheap um at 7700 on DraftKings. So uh, he'd probably be, is he my favorite Chicago? Yeah, I think so. So, so for me, I would play Vooch. I guess DeRozan's fine. So either Vooch or DeRozan with Giannis certainly makes some sense. Um, have this, I mean, I have this feeling Vooch is going to have a really good game. Um, so, so him at 7,700, Giannis on the other side, it's certainly something you could do. Yeah, I don't have any interest in Vooch. It's not a good matchup. Um, Brooke Lopez has not been there all season, so everybody who kept talking about this, Brooke Lopez is actually a very, very good post defender. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not high on Vooch. Okay. The, guy, the guy who I would take a shot on here uh, would be Zach Levine. It's a team that the one weakness they have is, or the biggest 
I don't even call it a weakness. They, they, they literally want to pack the paint, jam you in the middle, and, and, and they'll let you shoot threes. They're not going to let you get anything near the basket. Um, that's okay. Milwaukee's defense. So Zach Levine is a guy who and – they, and they play fast. So Zach Levine is a guy who can definitely – be out there and put up maybe not a slate breaking performance with all those guys, but he can put up 45 plus fantasy points. I, I don't see this as being an exciting game outside of Giannis being a really good play that I don't think is going to be very high owned tonight. And you look at it right now, the standings, this really matters for these good teams. And, and right now uh, the bucks, I think the bucks are perfectly content being the three or four seed. I don't think they care. Um, that's the problem because I don't think they're afraid. And when, we were, when they were playing for the one seed and they were in first place last week or, or battling for first, I was all on board the play, you know, they're, they're, they're going to go out there and try and win. They don't care about Brooklyn. That's true. But if you would have the ability to just completely avoid it, probably not the worst thing in the world to do. You know what I mean? I, to, and by the way, it's not just Brooklyn. I think Atlanta is the team people should be scared of, not, not Brooklyn. Um, I mean, both of them, I guess you could be scared of, but that, those are both legitimately legitimate teams that could, that could give you a hard time in a series. I do like Giannis a lot. I think he's a terrific spend up. I don't understand why the projections don't like him as much as I do, but I'm, I'm very high on him and, Probably, uh, probably just he he as as a priority, and then Levine as a secondary play. The Washington Minnesota begins the um, begins the value train. Um, there's a couple of a uh, couple of spots here um, that are showing up now as as good as good. Um, one, not great, but but Jared Vanderbilt at 4100 looks decent, uh, and then on the Washingtons also Minnesota. Wow, D'Angelo Russell's only sixty four hundred. I didn't even realize what what had, what had occurred with him. Kind of he have to. He's been like five k on Vanduul for a while. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I kind of have to keep make him in play at sixty four hundred. Um, and then on um, Washington, you're getting a, an okay projection on Ish Smith, who I just don't like playing. Um. I guess there isn't that much in this game. I, but I guess, I guess D'Angelo Russell would be my favorite um, and Vanderbilt if I, if I need to, but hopefully I don't need to. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's just take a look at this, what this would mean is because it's only matter. It only really matters for the, and I, again, I have to look at it like this because this is what this time of year, um, the, the Timberwolves ha- are a game and a half back. And I bet you people don't realize of the jazz to get out of the play in game. They could actually pass the jazz. Um Wait, the Jazz are like that far down? In the sixth seed, yeah. The West is, uh, I mean, look, people talk about the East being loaded and they have, the East have stuff at the top, but the, the West one through seven is pretty tough. I mean, Jesus. I mean, like, the Jazz were in second place, like not or not long ago, you know, or third place, not long ago. Jazz are like a top three team. In the East. I mean, they're, like, they're only a half game behind the Nuggets. The, you know, the Jazz, they, they're all bunched up. They're two and a half behind the Mavs who have been, been hot in the second half of the year. You know what I mean? So, so they're all bunched up. So that's, they're not like a terrible team. They're just, and Minnesota has been really, really good the second half of the year till, till a, a little bit of a stumble and then they bounce back. But I, I'm, I, I'm struggling because I, I think, you, you know, this is a must win for Minnesota or must win if you want to try and, and I think they would, that you would try and get out of the playing game with all your heart and do everything you can. So I think everybody should have a boost on their minutes on Minnesota. The problem is they tend to like to play these backup guards mm-hmm. quite a bit. Everybody is in play for me. I, I, I wouldn't just say Cat. I think, I think, uh, I mean, uh, Russell, I think Cat, I don't care about a few, a few bad games. And then he bounced back with some decent ones. I think that at 8,300 on FanDuel, Cat's kind of like a guy you're going to want to try to get in, um, at least into some lineups, because the guy who can break the slate against, no, they have nobody to match up with him at all. Um, anyway, I, 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 I like Russell. I think that the 6,400 price is, is definitely warranted based on the last month of the season. But he did have a good game against Houston. That's Houston. He's fifty three hundred on Fanduel, by the way, Russell. <laughs> um, anyway, that's I, I do I do like one of the big three there, and I really think you could take. I think you could just pick the lowest on one sometimes if you wanted to, if you like the game environment, which obviously I do here. They're supposed to score one hundred twenty five points, um, highest outside of Brooklyn on the slate. So I would play a little bit of uh, of the of one of those big three uh, with my favorites being Russell, then Cat, then Edwards. But if Edwards is going to be the lowest owned, I'll just flip the order on that. Um, and I, I'm not getting to anything on Washington. The only one who's going to be somewhat owned and maybe even for good reason that I wouldn't mind. It's just too big of a slate probably is Porzingis. But again, I say it's a big slate and there's not a whole lot I like so far. So uh, I would say Porzingis is probably the most viable of the uh, other side. Um, all right, Portland and OKC. Well, this guy, I feel like these guys play every night. 
Um, well, that was the last time I was here. That's what was my my opinion on that last game was that was like it was an easy over and it was oh it was insanely over. Even without the overtime, it would have been like incredibly. Yeah, it was a smash, and I would go right back to that. By the way, um, just for those of you who didn't hear this take, I mean, when you have this tankathon, these tankathon games, the first thing that 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 goes when you're told not to try is defense. <laughs> and 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 this game will be a shit show. I mean, it's going to be up and down. It's going to be everybody shooting. Everybody, no one's. It's Ole defense. It's going to well, Minnesota, Minnesota is going to play. Oh, I'm talking about Portland OKC. I think we will. Oh, I'm off. so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. I, I my bad. I missed the transition. I'm sorry about that. Sheets. Go yeah. ahead. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Go so ahead. as I was saying, I mean, like I think the over is like kind of an easy easy money over here again. I think mm-hmm. people are going to go up and down the court. No one's going to play defense. They're just going to just who can tank the best. You know, you take a layup first, you know, whatever it is. And uh, and 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 whatever the over under is, is too low. Um, that's that's my first thought. Then, on the, however, I mean, they kind of juiced these Portland guys up just a little bit to the point where I don't know if I want to play him. Um, the, the, the best guy for now looks like Greg Brown, but not that great. I mean, I'm really not getting to too much on the Portland side. Um, I am getting to the OKCs, though. So let's start with um, Pukashevsky. And it seems weird to play with 6,700, but let's go. <laughs> right? um, so I like that. I like Krejci, uh at 4,600. Maybe I don't like anybody that much. Ma- wow, Mount on 7,300. God bless America. Um, so I would start with Pukashevsky and Krejci, but it's, it's not as much of a fantasy friendly game as it was last week, I think. No, no. Um, so well, I, only I, remember I, bet, I, would bet, I would bet the over and include Pukashevsky as my, and Kretzky as my two favorite OKC guys. Yeah, it should be noted that both teams only had nine bodies in the last time they played. So that's a very different situation than, than this one that we've got today. Because okay. th- So that's partly why they don't stand out. I mean, if you, told, if you only had a nine, nine guys and one right. of them you weren't planning on playing <laughs> um, like they did right. last time, right. I'm just, I'd have to get more in this game. But that's what I've got right now. And it is, it's funny, I have it as a priority, and, but I, I don't, it's just an early day priority. Poku, Maladon, Krejci, Wiggins is my order. It feels a little funny to play Poku at only 600 less than Maladon when Maladon has flashed a bigger ceiling and pretty much more consistent results. I do like Poku though. I, I mean, it just feels a little fishy to play him and project that we, you know, we're sure he's going to play 34 minutes tonight. Um, he did play 36 in the last game, 28 the game before. He's got a he's got a massive ceiling too. You know, I actually think Poku still is my favorite, but I think you want you want to try and get some exposure to one of those guys. On the other side, I'm not going to play Chris Dunn. I will take some shots on Greg Brown. Um, but really, I, as of, I, don't, I don't think by the end of the day, this is going to be a game that I'm, I'm targeting um, like, like you might have thought you would be. So I agree right. with you. Yeah. All right. What do you got for San Antonio outside of uh, Trey Jones being clearly the, the obvious, most obvious play on the slate? Yeah, Trey Jones is the most obvious play on the slate. Um, at 4K, he's going to be... You know, it, it, I think in the I think in the milli in the milli three K is probably going to be seventy five percent. Overall, probably at least fifty, um, maybe more. Uh, he's showing up as just too tough of a play to avoid. It'll be like 95 percent. Oh, you think that much? Okay. If if, if, uh, if it's not if the slate lock right now, it'd be ninety plus percent in that. Term. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh, I'm also getting uh, I'm also getting Lonnie Walker as a good play um, for San Antonio. Um, so. If, if you have it in you, it's a, we talked about this in our baseball uh, video yesterday, like the concept of leverage, you know, you could, I think Lonnie Walker could be kind of some fun price leverage. You know what I mean? Like it's the same price as, as Trey Jones, same game, not exactly the same position. Right. But I don't know. That could be uh, that could be kind of fun. Um, then there's Zach Collins, who of course he had the game when I wasn't here. Um, only waiting the whole season for the Zach Collins. He actually, he started off it with, with in a good game. I don't know if he actually finished it that way, but he certainly started off smashing. How did he end? Yeah, up he crushed. That? He crushed the last two games. He put up thirty. Yeah, he did. He did. He had forty and, and both 30. against Portland. Probably worth noting, but uh, against his former team. Um, yeah, against, not, actually, not only against his former team. Where was you know, I? Oh, I was away. That's right. And they played him all the minutes too, which they did. They hadn't done all. Yeah, played him thirty-one minutes the other night. Um. Well, he's got a little bit of a tougher matchup today. Yep. Um, 
Should I go back to him? Because I was, I'm on tilt that I was away when I, no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, those are the two guys from San Antonio, Trey Jones and, and Lonnie Walker. I'm not really, I guess Collins is not bad. Um, yeah. And then I'll tell you a guy who I play from time to time because he fits in. I, don't, I probably, it's not a guy you like to play, but he seems some, sort of consistent. At least when I play him is, is Josh Richard is Josh Richardson. Um, I guess I must've played him when I knew he was going to have the 30 minutes when uh, guys were out, I guess. So that was, uh, I guess a little different. So maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe he's not the greatest player in the world. And then on Denver, uh, you know, Jokic, if you can get him in terrific, um, you know, strongest, you know, point play on the slate did what I haven't been following. Did Aaron Gordon piggyback off of those couple of good games? He's been doing better or, or is that just the one game that he don't played? ever, it doesn't ever matter with him is the answer. It okay. really doesn't. He doesn't go through like streaks of good. It's just like a, a randomness factor. He's he's been good lately. Um, he's, he's no way four, you're four, four, four of the last five games will take at this price. You know, not not a, I would not take thirty five fantasy points at six k in this no. price. Okay. okay. I, I mean, I would be okay with it, but I, I'm certainly not looking to try and play guys where okay. where they can have a great game, go nine for eleven, and get there. You know. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I mean, Trey Jones, maybe Lonnie Walker, maybe. I mean, do you want to like play Jokic with like three Spurs just for fun? I mean, you could do that. Never a good idea to play three Spurs, in my opinion. <laughs> that's, but true, that's true. The one thing I would say is that these minutes for the Spurs, I don't think any of these minutes are anywhere near solidified. Like, yeah. they're, they're going to play, they need to win. They're desperate to win. It's a must win for them. Um, every game is a must win for them going the rest of the season. And they are going to play their guys who I think are playing well the most minutes. But I kept saying that before, and they still they spread out the minutes a little bit more, even still in that same situation. Um, kind of surprised me a little bit. But I think that you go in order of favorite Spurs is Trey Jones for me, uh, Jones, Vassal, Collins, Keldon Johnson, then Walker. Okay. Um, Walker does have a, a can put up a ceiling for that price, but the, the sort of in you know inability to ever really get minutes is kind of tough on this slate to try and make an excuse for a value guy he is minimum cost on Fanduel, so maybe a little bit more even if he was three three k that extra thousand i would i would take that savings so i could play my yoga just because i do i do think Jokic is going to absolutely crush tonight um again they, they like they need to win these games the they're right now a half game up on the jazz for the five they're probably not going to get to the mavericks for the four but they still there's still a very outside chance they could slip back into the seven which put them in the play-in game, which you really don't want to do. So I like Jokic. Um, everybody else is is blah for me on, on Denver. But this is crazy. I've only got three sort of priority or four priority plays so far. And usually like I want to, I end up with like 30 at the end of our first look. Um, all right, Memphis and Utah sheets. What do you got here? They just rated, um, it just did like new power, ra- power ratings, the NBA or whatever. And Memphis is ranked number two. We have the second best, the second best team in the NBA this year, though. So yeah, just, they've won. They're, they're the second best record, right? Oh, is yeah. that true? I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're four games up on the third best record. With the with uh, with with job basically sitting half the season. They only missed twenty some odd games and well, was probably like half the season, isn't it? I mean, yeah, one of the best five players in the league is there. Well, that's yeah, okay. We're arguing semantics here. He, maybe he played. He's going to end up having missed a little more than a quarter of the season. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Gobert, eighty one hundred. Mitchell, always. I mean, these two are always good. Uh, they, they always look like good mid-range plays. And they never get played. And on a 12-game slate, they're not going to get played at all. Um, that could be kind of fun uh, to play these. Again, this is a – you want low-owned shots, you know, to, 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 to win a million. Uh, they both have – well, I would say – I was going to say that Gobert has a seal. I, I don't – I don't – know of anybody against Stephen Adams really has a great seal. I don't know, but, mm-hmm. but, but I, I think, I think Mitchell could certainly go off in this spot. So uh, I do like that. Um, Gobert, I guess, take up a center spot, which, you know, you don't like to see. And on Memphis, how, how do I not like anybody? I don't know. Uh, I, I, so I, I guess I just don't uh, Mitchell and Gobert and that's, that's it for me. I think. Yeah, I, I, it's very hard to like anybody at Memphis. They're super deep. They have nothing to play for. Um, literally nothing to play for at all. So uh, my, my initial thoughts is, but usually the, the thing with them is they're so deep and they're, they're, they're so good at the, at the, in their depth 
it doesn't even matter. Like they still are competitive every game. Even even if they tried to lose a game, they would have a really hard time doing right. it. Too many good players. Too many, not, not necessarily all great, but too, everybody's really good. Um, I, I, I think that the answer for me, I guess you could, you could make an argument for Tyus Jones. Um, I am so amazed by some of the stuff DeAnthony Melton does in short time, but there's, I just can't get to it on this slate. There's, I mean, I guess Desmond Bain versus Mitchell would be the maybe the one way that you can get weird and do that. But I, I just think I'm leaving it alone on the Memphis side. And I, I don't mind the idea of taking a shot on Mitchell. The guy who actually probably makes the most sense to me is Bogdanovich at 5K. Um, just because with the shooting ability and Memphis playing fast, I could see him getting, you know, he's also projected to play 30 minutes. That could turn into 34. They need to win this game. Um, they obviously can't get into that seven seat spot. So I think you could argue for Bogdanovich, um, but I, I don't really have interest in anything else. And honestly, I'm really shocked. I mean, it's going to be very different later today, guys. But right now, there's not a lot of guys I see as priorities here on this slate, and and certainly nobody in this game. But Mitchell and Bogdanovich. I got to tell you, Bobby. I mean, I, I still think back to that that that, that Jamal Murray Donovan Mitchell show from like a couple of years ago in the bubble, or whatever. Yeah. And, and you tell me this is a must-win game for Utah against a team that doesn't really need to win. But they've all been must-wins, and, and Mitchell hasn't done anything. No, oh, really? I mean, it's, okay. it's the same thing as always for them. You know, that now that you could argue some of those games were tougher, but he wasn't special against the Lakers. Like, he wasn't special against at, at Golden State, and, and these were important okay. games. Okay. And, and they lost some of these games. They lost a lot, you know, a yeah. good portion of those. But I still – like, I, I'm not saying he's a bad play, though, because I, I still think that – you could definitely make an argument like you're saying. I, I do have that in my head. Like they had a the little break too. So now it's like, I don't know. I feel like maybe, maybe it is a good night to play Mitchell at really low ownership, but it does feel a little thin at first, at first look to me. Well, what's, what's, what's a better play Mitchell or, or Butler? Probably Mitchell. Well, it depends on who sits for, if anybody sits for the heat guys, maybe it's closer, but yeah, I guess if anybody sits for the heat guys, I would say Butler, but if uh, I think, I think both those are, are, are really, really good tournament plays. I really do. We'll see. I'm going to play one of them. I, I, I know I'm going to play one of them in this big one. I like the, I like the idea, Sheets. I'm, I'm with you. You're not, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not against it. What are we doing with New Orleans, Sacramento? Because it's another, another good, good pace game here. Yeah, we could play these guys. We could play guys I don't usually play. We could play – I mean, I play McCollum sometimes, but I don't ever, ever play Ingram. But at 8K, I'll, I'll try it. Um, but why do I lo- why do I always <laughs> gravitate to these eight K guys? Um, so I, I I like Ingram uh, less so McCollum. Who's projected? Oh, I didn't even know Larry Nance still played. Um, not really though. Uh, then on Sacramento, I guess I guess Fox is still out, right? Um, um Mitt, Davion Mitchell just okay. Just nobody, really. So for me, again, maybe a shot on, on Ingram, maybe a shot on uh, McCollum uh, on the New Orleans side. Yeah, this is an interesting – okay, so I have a weird play in this game that I actually am considering for my big buy-ins. And Herb? No, it's my guy. It's it's if Look, it, that, the, the, that would be the way to win the right? She's play, play Lance and play – I didn't even mention Lance earlier because he's not really in play, but just – it would be very, very, very funny to end up with Lance and Josh Jackson on your team. But I think Josh Jackson, Jackson he plays still huh? firmly in play. Um, like he doesn't have there, there's there's no real idea. His minutes sort of are going back and forth because they have the other guards and wings and any, and everything like that. But they've used him more and more. Uh, he played, you know, he played 20 minutes in the last game. We all know what he is as a point per dollar player. He can be very, very good. It's a large field wild card play. But if all the other value becomes concentrated on certain things. And this is I can have in the late game as a as a placeholder, if nothing else, because I'm Absolutely. not sure we're gonna have late news. I just think it's an interesting play. And and like by the way, even uh, on this slate, yes, you're gonna need to get more from your value by the time the slate locks. But at the moment, if we just took it right now, I would be, I wouldn't have a problem taking a shot with Josh Jackson at all. Um, so I'm gonna I'm, I have him on my list here, um, and I don't really. <laughs> Davion Mitchell is, I mean, he, he has the usage. He's, he's fine, but I'm not going to do it. It's just a little too much for, for me to pay. Um, same with DiVincenzo. Uh, if there was one weird guy, I guess other than Jackson, I guess it's Metu, but I, I don't think I want to do that either. So I, I'm sort of off that. And then or right now, Brandon Ingram showing up is going to be popular. He's not going to be popular by the time the slate locks, in my opinion. Um, 
So I don't mind taking a shot on Ingram or McCollum in like a, an incredibly good matchup and no one is going to play McCollum. And I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case. So I, I, I do think that, uh, that both those guys are in play. I think Joe Val could smash, but it's just a little too much to pay for him for me. Um, McCollum has been averaging like almost 50 with this freaking team. Except with, you know, you take away two very strange games, but yeah, well, not almost 50, sorry, like 46. I have it. Is that right? I must be something up with that one. So those guys stand out as being okay, but I, I don't like love any of it. And I, I know it sounds weird to say that about a game, but that's, you know, in a funny way, that's kind of like exciting to me because I don't want to have a hundred million, you know, great plays that, that are obvious. I want to figure out what's going to happen. And there's a lot of guys getting called up from the G league. So just be careful. Like there's going to be some weirdness that comes up, but as of right now, this is another one that is sort of like a little bit of a snoozer for me. Um, I, I don't mind Ingram or McCollum, but you'd think that New Orleans, Sacramento, we'd be ready to do some business. And I'm not, I'm not all that excited about it. What is the, uh, the spread of the Lakers Phoenix? Phoenix by 11 and a half. Okay. I, I'm asking this question so, sort of rhetorically and sort of non rhetorically. I didn't even realize Anthony Davis was back playing basketball. Um, <laughs> are they playing with all three of those guys? Well, that's an impossible question to answer because I don't know if they're going to play tonight. LeBron didn't play the other night and it's definitely hurt. And they're basically out of the playoff picture, out of the, out of the, uh, the postseason at the moment. Um, they Do have they to, have a chance to make the postseason though? I mean, yeah, they have to win, but the problem is they had to win in the last game and LeBron didn't play that one. He was hurt. Um, so really, 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 really hard to have this game as a late night game because right. there is a non-zero chance that none of those guys play. And there's also a, a reasonable chance that all of them play. And there's a chance you saw, you saw Westbrook put up his best game fantasy wise in a while. His last game, I was away. You know, I'm, just, I'm just catching up. Yeah. Um, He's been incredibly efficient, by the way, which is crazy to say. They're just a really bad team. I don't know, man. If, if, if in fact, I, I will say this that if in fact you have this, that, that they're, if, if they, if they all three do play tonight, I mean, and that line stays the way it is. I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to be, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be forced to try and be the sucker <laughs> and take those three guys plus 10 points. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't, it's going to be one of those stupid, stupid decisions. Like you just don't realize how good Phoenix is and how bad these Lakers really are. And I saw some quotes, I saw some stuff. Um, but if, if you tell, if, if I get confirmation, all three of those guys are in and I get 10 points with those three dudes, I don't, I don't care. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'll put that in my, sheets bets list or whatever it is. Um, I, I think, I think they, the Lakers obviously to say the least have been disappointing, but um, you give me those three guys against any, any team in the league. That's, that's a, it's a 10 point underdog. I'm just, I'm just going to be forced to try um, from a fantasy perspective. If all three of those guys play, I'm going to play none of them. Um, I don't believe. And just again, like watch the news and see, see who's out, see who's in. From Phoenix, uh, Chris Paul, um, Booker, none of these guys are projected all that great. Um, yeah, there's a good reason. There's no, they're also being way over projected too, because they, they have legitimately nothing to play for. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. So what, what, they have an eight game lead on anybody, and it's three games to go. And they're locked in as the one seed? They're locked in as the one seed. They've lost two in a row. They just lost to OKC. Um, Oh, so there's only three games to go in the regular season for most of these teams, some teams four. Um, and the Lakers need to win all three of these games. Well, they're down by one game and they lose the tiebreaker. So probably if they, if, if they play, I'm telling you, if they play all these, all three of those guys there, I'm, I'm totally pounding them plus the points. I mean, yeah, I, have, I, I, I'm okay with doing that. They haven't been all that, that great lately, but they haven't oh, been terrible, but I don't care. I'm really, I'm I, I think that there's, I, I have no idea what's up. You know what? This is, this is, just, this is the John DeMott theory. John DeMott was a guy I, uh, I, I bet horses with like my whole life before I got older, whatever it is. And, and, and his, and, and his, 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 one of, one of his theories was if, if I didn't see it, it doesn't exist. Right. So I, 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 if I, I have not, I have not seen the last few games from the Lakers. I've certainly not seen any games with Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. And, and so if you give me all three of those guys, I will take them plus 10. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think Anthony Davis is going to smash tonight. Um, he looked the best he, I mean, he looked way better than he did before the injury the last two games. Um, I'm not, I'm talking about just from a fantasy perspective, what we're going to do. He was, he was, uh, 
really the usage I've never, I haven't seen him like that with his usage basically like ever. <laughs> um, you have 37% usage in the last game with Westbrook on the team. I mean, that's pretty wild. He, he has more usage than Westbrook. He put up 50 and 60 the last two games. Uh, whether LeBron plays, if LeBron doesn't play, I, I absolutely am going to prioritize him. If LeBron does play, I probably still am going to prioritize him. I, I think that it, I, 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 the only thing I hate is that he's, by the, who knows what, how the, the, the stuff shakes out by the end of the day, but I hate using that center spot. I wish he had the forward eligibility to maybe make me yeah. flexible for my lineups. But I love Anthony Davis tonight. I also think Westbrook is a tremendous tournament play. The problem is if LeBron plays, obviously that's a lot less exciting. Um, and you don't have any pivots. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't hear it till late in the day. But this is one we probably should know a little earlier in the day whether LeBron and them are playing. Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's just it's and, and for everybody who's been criticizing Westbrook, just take a look at his game. Look at his look at his the, the lack of turnovers, the high assist totals, and the consistently good shooting is something that you know people should maybe take note of before you try and blame this whole season on this guy. They're just a bad basketball team. Um, and they were a bad basketball team last year. They just happened to sneak into the eighth seed. You know what I mean? The, the, don't like, I just, I'm just so sick of hearing about it living in LA. It's like, just, I want the season to be over. I think a lot of Laker fans even kind of feel that way. So just be ready that somebody could end up. I don't know. I was going to go play them one, like plus 200 to one with the championship. I don't know. That's, they're not though. That's the crazy part. Brooklyn, just like, Brooklyn, like Brooklyn has to win two play-in games right now. And they're the, and they're the, the, they're the third favorite in a loaded East. You know what I mean? The Lakers are still not, st- I think they're still one of the 15 or one of the 12 most likely teams to win the title right now. Like it's crazy. Um, but yes. Yeah, so, so, so that, 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 that the thing that you, that you think is as a, as a cool way to get different is actually not that different than what okay. other the, the way Vegas is treating it because okay. other people are having that same thought. I think. I mean, you can't bet that you can't ever listen. There are certain teams you can ever never bet in prop bets. One, one of the Lakers, second are like the Yankees, like these teams that just get over bet like all the time. Hundred percent, it goes. Yep, hundred percent. And you think public perception would catch up with the the numbers, and it really doesn't. Like, I mean, look at Brooklyn. That's a great example. It's, it's, it's Excuse me. What, what what's Tiger Woods going to win the win the win the Masters? Probably like four to one or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Well, by the way, that's one I actually we'll we'll talk about that on our next show because I have some definite thoughts on that. I did a lot of digging oh, no. in off time yesterday on the tiger oh. stuff and some interesting, interesting things being said. Um, but I did want to point out, so we just got just got word that Cole Anthony is out. We don't have a confirmation on anybody else. Uh, be, but that's I I'm not hundred percent sure that that's correct though. It's an early thing. It says it looks like Cole Anthony unlikely to play. So we'll, we'll revisit Orlando later and everything at 545 Eastern. I'll be here. Sheets will be here at, at six. Yep. Um, and I will uh, probably be out of here by 615 because I have to try and win a million dollars. Uh, guys, uh, Sheets, you don't have anything else, right? No, I'm good. All right. Well, we did it in somehow in an hour, which is crazy. I know it's a long one, guys, but this is a big slate. Um, let's get lucky. Let's let's make some money tonight and let's, uh, you know, go in and, and build our bankroll for MLB, but not be too crazy with the bankroll tonight. And again, I'm going to be a little bit, but. That's just what I'm doing. Anyway, good how, luck. How, how many are we playing? Play more than one? I'm just, I'm just playing two in there in the three K. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, no, I know, but I, play, I, I was considering the three, but I was like, nah, it seems like too much to put on the crazy situation. Okay. Anyway, guys, good luck, everybody. We will see you at a uh, 5:45 Eastern.